Good morning, Parkside. This is Pastor Reed here with you. As you can see, I'm coming from you from out of doors, and uh, it may maybe <clears throat> give some of you the impression that we might not exactly be live here on Sunday mornings, which is actually true. We do pre-record a lot of our stuff sometimes. It makes it a little bit easier to stream, and it makes it easier for us to participate in the services online with you. I hope that's okay. This morning, I thought it was such a beautiful day and I wanted to come out and um, prepare a worship set that actually kind of ties into that. I thought it would be good for us to start our time together this morning, though, in prayer. And right now we're aware of everything that's going on in our country, all the struggles that are going on. And we just want to take a few moments and pray as we open our service in solidarity for justice. We know that, that justice is, is a hard thing to come by sometimes. But we also know that God is on the side and, and has a heart for justice. We also know that in this fallen world, the only way we will truly know justice and reconciliation is when Jesus is on our side. And so we as a church want to be uh, standing and on the side of that. And so let, let's just open our time in prayer together. Father, we are grateful for the day you've given us today. I'm standing outside in a beautiful sun on Saturday morning expecting beautiful sun on Sunday, but we know there are so many who are unable to either get outside or unable to enjoy because they are really struggling right now. And there's the struggle of the coronavirus, but then there's all this tension that is rising up in our country. And we want to just pray and cry out to you, Father, that you would draw people's hearts to Jesus so that we can truly experience what it means to be reconciled to you and to be reconciled to one another so that we can make a difference in the world that we live in and we can call for justice. And Father, we know there are times when justice will only truly be served when Jesus returns and makes all things right again. And so we pray this morning as we do every day, come Lord Jesus, come. We look forward to your coming and returning and making your creation right. Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're outdoors, so would you sing with me to the God who is the God of our creation and the God of justice. This is my Father's will, and to my listening all nature sings and around me rings the music of
because this is your world. You are not done working in it, and we're grateful for your work inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to worship the God of all creation.
chains, I'm a prisoner. Pastor Justin, your friendly neighborhood family pastor, coming to you from Theo TV, hanging out here with Theo and uh, some of his dinosaur toys. Uh, we just love uh, doing videos each week to teach the children about Jesus Christ and God's Word, and uh, they can always check them out either on our website by clicking on the Children's Ministry banner, or you can watch it on our Facebook page. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, before we get to uh, our prayer and then the sermon, uh, please continue to be a part of the ministries. Uh, Monday night prayer meeting at 8 o'clock. We have Wednesday night worship at 6.30. Uh, we have two adult connection classes on Sundays at 9.30 and at 11 o'clock. If you want to be a part of any of those, uh, you can contact the church office for the, the Zoom password and codes and all the things you need to, to be a part of that. Uh, also, the Daily Bread has finally arrived, uh, so if you get that devotional, uh, you can come and pick that up. You can also come and pick up the Alliance, uh, Alliance Life magazine. You can come and pick those up at the church office, which is still open from 8 to 2, Monday through Friday. And finally, we ask that you would continue to pray for the pastors, the elders, and the leaders as we look to navigate this pandemic. Uh, we want to have the ministries continue on as strong and as active as they can, um, but you also want to keep people safe. Uh, so if, I, uh, if you could just keep praying for us and as we are guided uh, by God to do uh, what he wants us to do. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? 
Father, we thank you for the beautiful days you've given us, for all of our needs that you've taken care of. Uh, we thank you for all the things negative that haven't happened. Uh, we thank you for all of us who have not had the coronavirus. We thank you for all those who have been healed from it. We thank you that the death toll is down. And we just pray, Father, that, that your healing hand will be upon all of us to either keep us safe or to heal us from the diseases that are out there. Uh, Father, we pray for our nation and pray for healing. Help us to look in the face of the irritations and the face of of the sin that is so prevalent in this fallen world. Help us to be looking for the good, looking for what you're doing, uh, for praying and for people, loving people uh, in these difficult times. Father, we pray that you would give peace in our little portion of the earth here in Jefferson County, uh, that you would help us to uh, live a life that shows people uh, the life of Jesus Christ, that they too may want him to be his, our their Lord and Savior. So Father, continue to bless the service, bless Pastor Mike, anoint him to give us your message. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Parkside. I'm blessed that you've tuned in and I uh, hope that uh, this is meaningful to you as it is to me as I study the Word of God. I just want to remind you that we have our outline and deeper life questions online and this sermon is going to go quickly because I'm beginning a new series in the Gospel of John. And uh, I'm going to have a lot of facts that I'll give you. And let me just say that the entire manuscript is online for you to read or to download or to print out or to give to somebody. It's been uh, on, at parksidebible.org under Messages. So uh, let's take some time to pray before we begin. Father God, we do thank you for your word. Your word is precious to us, and it speaks to the issues of life. And Lord, we pray that we would apply it first to our hearts and minds, that we become more like Jesus, and that we would love like he loved. We would share light like he shared the light, and that we would share our lives with others so that they might see Jesus in us and come to him as Savior and Lord. We pray all this in his precious name. Amen and amen. Well, uh, I titled uh, the sermon start at the beginning, and I don't know whether you're uh, like this, but I'm like this. I'm a I'm kind of a stream of consciousness type talker, and I get in a conversation with my wife Janet. I'll start talking about my incident that happened in my life, and she'll say, whoa, 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 so who was with this? And I said, well, I said, it was this Bob. Uh, and, and where did this happen? And, and and I'll say, oh, uh, it happened here. And then I said, then this happened, then this happened. She says, what time out? How did, this be how did this begin? And she says, finally she'll stop me and she'll say, we, we just start at the beginning? I don't know about you, but has anybody ever gotten into a story and they're so excited to tell you the details? You ask questions, they ramble, and you go back and forth to fill in. And then finally you stop them and you say, calm down and just start at the beginning. Well, as we look at the Gospel of John, I want you to have this picture in your mind. Uh, it's, you know, at 30 AD, Jesus Christ was born. 33 AD, we believe, he died on the cross. About 45 AD, Mark wrote his first Gospel. Matthew and Luke wrote their Gospels. And then in 70 AD, the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed. John, the disciple, uh, was on the Isle of Patmos by, by punishment, and about 95 AD, he looks back at all the stories that have been going on, you know, about Jesus, and it, it, did he do this? Did he did not do this? Some questions that were being asked. Was he the God of the creation of the world, or was he the baby that was born in Bethlehem? The Gnosticism that, of that day was questioning whether the man Jesus was even Jesus, only a container for the Spirit of God. All this was going on, and John, John starts out by, and let me read from uh, 1 John uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made, Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, 
and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John begins at the beginning. Well, when we get into the book of John, and we are getting into it this first sermon, we'll have a whole sermon series on the Gospel of John. I want to share with you some facts about John, some what I call fun facts about John. Now, you're not going to be able to see the fun facts here, but uh, you can look them up again on the manuscript that's online. But let me go over it with them. First of all, uh, it was written by John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, and I says said about 90 A.D. or 95 A.D., and he was one of the inner circle with James and Peter. He was the son of Zebedee and Salome, involved in his family's upper middle class fishing business. He was younger brother of James. James was the church leader who was martyred in 44 A.D., and you can find that in the book of Acts chapter 12. John was a son of thunder and the only disciple not mentioned by name in the Gospel of John. 93% of the events that are found in the Gospel of John are unique compared to the, uh, the synoptic Gospels, the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, who seem to have shared some resources. And we call them the synoptic Gospels because they're giving just a synopsis of Jesus' life. There are no parables in the Gospel of John. And, and the Greek word for repent or repentance is not found in the Gospel of John. There are only eight miracles in the Gospel of John, five of which are not recorded in the other Gospels. And this is probably because John did have available to him Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospels. And this is the one point I'd like to make uh, before we even start to talk about the Gospel of John and get into depth with it, is that John actually gave us a purpose statement. In John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31, he said, Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of... Uh, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life through his name. The King James Version obviously is a little bit difficult for me to read, but what it's saying here is that there's many things that are not written here, but these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and have life through his name. That gives me a, a, a platform to say that the theme of John is to believe, to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the creator of the universe. He is the incarnate one who came and was born as a baby. Ninety-nine times, and I wish it was a hundred, but ninety-nine times, the verb believe appears in the Gospel of John. And we are to bear witness of this, these things, and that happens 48 times, the phrase bear witness, and 25 times, the noun truth appears. And eight of the 21 chapters are devoted to Jesus last week. John is making a point here. He's writing the gospel to prove that Jesus is the Son of God and that by believing in him, we will have eternal life. John, as I said, begins at the beginning. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was with God in the beginning. This uh, Word uh, is capitalized in, in most of our modern translations. Of course, it was not capitalized in the Greek language. All the letters were in the capitalization in the, in the Greek text. But John is using this phrase logos for a specific purpose, this word, which is the translation of the Greek word logos. He's trying to tell us that the, the nature of the Word is actually personified in Jesus Christ. He was in the beginning. He was with God the Father. He was and is God the Son. As I said, this, this word logos was very important in the Greek language. As a matter of fact, the Greeks used 
Logos to express not only the spoken, but also the word that is still in the mind, the reason behind all things. When they apply it to the universe, uh, they meant the rational principle that governs everything. The God of the universe, Logos, He is the one who is the word, the final word for all things. You know, it's interesting to note that the Jews, even in the day of Jesus, used the word Logos as a way of referring to God. They actually would say, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord is important. The emphasis on Logos. It's a phrase actually still used today when someone is describing a visitation from God. The word of the Lord came to me. The term Logos was meaningful to both groups that John was writing to, the Jews and the Greeks. So as we look at that, let's remind ourselves when we see John using the word that he's speaking about, Jesus, God the Son. The purpose of the word is given to us also that he was part of creating all things. It says that the creation was through him, verse 3. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Also, it says life for mankind was also provided for him. John chapter 1, verse 4 says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And the light, the light of spiritual illumination was from him. That he was the one who would bring light to the darkness. Um, as we look at creation, and I would like to do that for a second, we find these verses in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit was hovering over the waters. We all know that verse if we've been in Sunday school or we heard the creation story. We know that God created the heavens and the earth. Did you know that in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, in speaking about Jesus, it says, and explaining about Jesus' part in the creation, it says, through whom Jesus made the universe. So you have God the Father, you have the Holy Spirit of God hovering over the waters, and through Jesus all things were created. No doubt, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have been with us from the beginning. All three were there at creation. And all three were also involved in the making of mankind in their image and in their likeness. I pointed this out many times to people. Then in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. God doesn't say, let me make man in my image. He, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, were creating mankind together. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, The Lord God forged, and I'm, I'm using my translation here, or hammered out the man from lifeless, inorganic dirt and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life comes from God. Jesus is God, and he is the giver of life. Um, I'm going to uh, say it this time. De there's an uh, article I read many years ago, in 2005, that Death Valley uh, no longer deserves its name. I, I drove through Death, Death Valley one time in California, and it's, it, it's a very dry and desert area. Normally the hottest and the driest place in North America. This desert area experienced the wettest year in 2005. As a result, colorful wildflowers bloomed, vast fields of desert gold poppy and desert star and even primrose sprouted and covered the landscape in Death Valley with color. Heavy rains brought the desert to life. You know, we don't see that miracle often in Death Valley. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was in, in Burkina Faso, and I wanted to just show you some slides, uh, it was at a time when there had been five months of absolutely no rain 
If you look at this picture, everything is dead. Everything is brown. Uh, I have a few friends there watching us work as we built a church, and that's me standing up on top of the girders of the church that we built. It wasn't but a few months after we were there that the international worker sent me this picture. And I want to tell you something. It's not that they brought in sod to plant all the green grass. That's not sod. That was always there. Because God is the giver of life. He can bring life out of lifeless dirt. Now, you'll probably say, oh, that seed was always there. The roots were, of the grass were there. My goodness, that's a natural phenomenon. Yes. But we have to remind ourselves, where does life come from? God is always the giver of life. And he can bring life out of lifeless dirt. Here in, uh, in Burkina Faso, the, the, the season changes. And, and every year in Ouagadougou and Boba de Lasso, the village where the church was built, they see the miracle of God bringing back life to the desert land. So when I look at uh, Jesus, and Jesus is life, and Jesus is light in the Gospel of John, he mentions that often. The term life, by the way, is found 36 times. How Jesus is giving life. Jesus is the life, chapter 14, verse 5. He gives us eternal life, chapter 10, verse 28. And then also he's the light in, in, in that same vein, 30 times, uh, John mentions that he is the light. Jesus is the true light. Chapter 1, verse 9, we'll be looking at that next week. He is the light of the world. Chapter 8, verse 12. John gave us these terms, light and life, and contrasted them with death and darkness. They were simple but profound truths. Simple that a child can learn but profound that it can change our lives forever. John used these contrasts to present Jesus as the only Savior of the world. Think about that phrase for a moment, the Savior of the world. I've seen that on poster, uh, posters or billboards. I've seen that outside of uh, missions. You know, Jesus, the Savior of the world. Do you know John is the only one to use that title? In the entire New Testament, John is the only one to use that title. It's found in uh, John chapter 4, verse 42, when the Samaritans say that Jesus is the Savior of the world. And John used it in his epistle in 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. Jesus brought spiritual life to the darkened souls of mankind. If we remind ourselves of the Isaiah passage, it says the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And that light was Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is life. Eternal life, physical life. He is God that gives life. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, Jesus is the fulfillment of that Isaiah prophecy. In John chapter 1, verse 5, Jesus says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not understood it. Another translation is that the dark rejected it. In the slum of Manila, and it is overcrowded there, there was a gold rush in 2004 and it made the overcrowding worse it started when a 15 year old alfredo gallo found a chunk of gold in the philippine canal his father immediately sold it for 500 dollars and and bought a big screen tv and a bike once the word got out hundreds flocked to the filthy river looking for the precious metal The river is incredibly polluted and strewn with garbage, but now many see that river with new eyes looking for the light and the glimmer of gold. One village chief said, it's a very much a puzzle. All we ever got from this river before 
was trash. I, I reminds me of Nathaniel. Do you remember what Nathaniel said in the first chapter of John? He says, Nathaniel said of Jesus, who had uh, come from Nazareth, can anything good come from Nazareth? That place is just a place of trash. What kind of light can actually come from that town? Those who are in spiritual dar darkness think that way. How can Jesus change my life? Look at what's happening today. You know, we need to communicate clearly what Jesus has done for us. The spiritual darkness that surrounds people sometimes closes their eyes to the spiritual light. As a matter of fact, the scriptures say, those in spiritual darkness aren't looking for spiritual light. John chapter 3, verse 19 Jesus says, this is the very, the light has come into the world. But people love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. They don't want to come out into the light. We who live in the light, we need to share it. Share our testimony. Share our witness. As John would have it, share what God has done to give us light and life. I don't know if you recognize this name, Anne Rice. Uh, the media once called her the queen of the occult. She sold millions of novels about vampires and witches. Several of her books have been made into movies starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. But since in her near-death experience in 1998, Anne had a change of heart. In 2005, she said this, I promise from now on that I will only write for the Lord. Christianity Today quoted Anne Rice in an interview uh, that uh, went viral, uh, that she achieved what it did uh, because Jesus rose from the dead, that she actually believed in the faith of Jesus because that he rose from the dead. Since 10, uh, 2010, she has distanced herself from organized religion. I want to point that out, since 2010. But even then, she said this, and let me read this. My faith in Christ is central to my life. My conversion from a pessimistic atheist lost in the world I didn't understand to an optimistic believer in a universe created and sustained by a loving God is crucial to me. Now, I just want to challenge you. I know we've gone over a lot of fun facts, but in reality, John begins his gospel compelling believers to share their faith with others so that they might Come to know Jesus as the only Savior of the world. This is our calling. This is why we are on the planet. To share the light and to help mankind understand the light and to help them embrace it for eternal salvation. Remember the purpose of John's book. Many other signs truly did Jesus do in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you might have life through his name. I do hope that you are a believer and that you have been changed by Christ and that you have an opportunity this week, this month, this day to share your witness with others. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for John, who started at the beginning and in his gospel gave us a purpose, not only for his gospel, but for us to trust Christ as Savior of the world and to share our witness with others. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. I hope you said Amen with me. And uh, we will see you again this week. Uh, be some reminded of all the things that we're doing online. And you can check them out at our Facebook page and at our website. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for that sermon. Let's take some time and reflect on what the Lord has spoken to us this morning. Jesus is the light of the world. He shines in the darkness. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Opened my
day for you today, Parkside. May you be blessed in the name of the Lord and drawn closer to Him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.